guys so it is super early in the morning and I wanted to get this voiceover done so hopefully I can upload the video today so today we are talking about Sennelier oil pastels so I'm just showing you some preliminary sketches that I did here in my uh, kind of art journal so you can watch the video before this it's about the chic sparrow or the travels notebook as an art journal and you'll be able to see that i have just put in some inserts into a travels notebook and i'm using this as kind of um, a place to document and sketch things and try things and swatch things so it's just basically it's not for planning it is just for art Okay, so we're going to swatch out the colours in this Cornelison and Sons sketchbook and I really just love this so I have a little bit of extra room um, in case I want to, you know, try anything else, which I don't end up doing but in this book, but I just wanted to be able to sort of spread out. So you can see that I have this little collection in this box from the art store it's just a box they put them in so I just keep um, putting them in there and then this is an old collection that was from a few years ago and there's a couple of other oil pastels in here that I want to add just to kind of show you the difference and then I also found this other tin that we had collected maybe six or seven years ago and um, yeah we'll swatch a couple of those and just look at the differences in you know the brands Okay, so I think that they do have colour names for these, but I am just going to read out the um, the number because it's the easiest thing to see on the pastel. So this is number 112, and then this one here is, I think it's the lemon yellow, 19. Okay, I think this is like a rich pale gold or something. This is number 114. So the 112 and the 114 are in the same kind of iridescent gold spectrum. So then we have number 233. And then this one is number 230. I think it's like a rose ochre. So I will try and uh, list these down below and try and find the colour names as well. So this is one of the ones that came in the little trial pack that I got so this is number 74 and so about five or six years ago I got like a little trial pack of so it's that silver tin that I showed that I'm keeping all my pens in and I think it comes with five or six colors so I've added those in here as well because they're really useful and you know really pretty colors okay so this one is number 77 and the one I did before that is number 236 so that is my favorite 236 is a coral I think it's called coral it's a really pretty one okay so this one again is it came in the sample packs this is number 220 and it's just a beautiful vibrant red so this one is a pearl white one so this is number 125 And so now we're swatching just the plain white. So that is number one, their first um, in the series. And when we get to the green, I will show you how you can use the white to make all these other colors a little bit pastel or change them a little bit. Okay, so this one's Bordeaux and it's number eight, the one that I just already swatched. The one I'm swatching now is 115. It's a copper, a beautiful iridescent copper. This one here is number 95. I think it's cobalt violet.
this one is a beautiful like cornflower blue it's number six and the one I did before that is the 123 I think it's called transparent blue or something like that it's a beautiful like a uh, shiny powder blue so the darker blue that I just did is number five and again it came in that set and then this green came in the set as well this is number 45 so that's the type of green that I wouldn't necessarily use in a painting so I will show you here with you can add the white on top of it and I probably should have just added less green to um, be able to get even a more pastel color here but um, I'm just kind of showing that you can mix these colors and create you know new colors Okay, so I'm just pulling out a couple of colors from my old collection here. So these were just in open stock at the local art shop at the time. So I think they're like, um, they're called something like fresh green pale and I think one's lilac and another light green. Um, but like you can see here how they're not creamy so when you put the Sennelier ones on the page they are just so creamy they slide really easily um, and you can you know mix them and blend them out and I could not get these ones to move at all so I'm not sure if there's like a medium that you can get to help smooth them out and to help mix them or you know you can also just use them like that but I just really love the creaminess of the Sennelier ones so I'm just going to find a page here and we will swatch these ones out. I'm, not, I'm just going to go through them super quickly and kind of show you a close-up of the colours. Uh, I'm not going to go through and name them all. But I just wanted you to kind of see the difference in application and also the colour range. So this is a beautiful colour range. I feel like hopefully one day the Sennelier range will expand as well and have some of these really vibrant hot pinks and... Um, the really soft minty greens and some um, more olive greens and things. Really love some of these really light pastel colors as well. But you can see even when I'm applying it, the camera is kind of shaking just based on how much pressure I have to put use to put it on the page versus the other ones where they just glide on straight away. I think one of the interesting things about looking at colour in any medium is that the your choices on colour and looking at how they work together and things can go into so many areas of your life like how you decorate your home, um, your dress style. So even if it's not necessarily a medium that I will work with, I really like just looking at the colours and thinking about you know the different possibilities. Okay, so here you can see the differences here in the finished product and these ones are a little bit more of a sophisticated color palette. These ones are a little bit brighter. And so we're just gonna use some of these Sennelier ones and mix them on the page and just kind of try and make some of these different colors. So you can see here that I really was trying to make like a 
more of a, a green gold or a spring green. What I did realize in doing this video is that I need a couple more neutrals. But here I've just used the same green with the two different yellows, a dark yellow and a lemon yellow, to create a different kind of uh, green gold there or a spring green, I guess. So I really love this color combination. So it's the Bordeaux with the copper. It's really beautiful. So in looking at these close-up shots, I really, really loved the um, way that these smudged together and the different effects that you can get. And I instantly was thinking about landscapes and clouds and especially like the um, valley shot that I put in. I think it was the last video and the kind of sky was smudged with pink clouds and um, it just made me really want to create uh, just a quick... Uh, sketch like that so I only had about five minutes left to do this uh, sketch but what I what I kind of did here was I started with my palette dirt so this is an expression you've probably heard so a lot of artists use their palette dirt to create these really um, subtle nuances of color sort of on their paintings now the interesting thing about this is that my palette dirt is completely different to the next person's. So you can see here that mine sort of go into smoky, dusky colors. And then I should have showed you, I didn't realize that it was off screen, but the next little well has a little bit of the neon pink, the azalea in it. So then you're also getting like these sort of pops of brighter pink. So you can see here even from the first hill to the second one and then the sky, these are the three different wells in my, the palette, the top of the palette. And so you can see the palette dirt from each tray is completely different. So this is just me exploring the medium. I've never really worked with it before and I am just kind of laying it on top of the watercolor here to see if, you know, if I need to let the watercolor dry more or if it's gonna work. And I'm just sort of creating these very abstract sort of clouds.
Okay, so a couple of things I wanted to mention before we go. I didn't use the watercolour. When I reapplied the watercolour, I didn't go over the oil pastel. So I think that's important. I will show you in a minute that I've tried that before and I just feel like it will contaminate your brushes and your watercolours. So I'm trying to keep that separate. So anywhere where I place the watercolor, the oil pastels, I want to make sure I've already built up enough watercolor and I don't want to go back to that area. And then the other thing was I just was not using my regular brush because I can't find them. So that was just sort of a choice because I just needed a brush. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you is uh, when I first got the sample set of the oil pastels, I tried them out in this uh, Hannah Muller sketchbook. And so I had used it kind of, I used the white here, you can see on the roses and kind of as a relief. So I put the pastel down and then I watercolored over the top of it. And at that point I realized like I don't really want to do this to my brushes or to the watercolors. So I was a bit stuck at that point because I really liked the look of this and it's a bit like a bit Batik style or is that, I'm not how sure how to say it, but um, that style where you put the wax down and then you can paint over the top of it and I think and so this is also just gelatos as well so um, I'm always saying you know use what you have if you've got gelatos you can use them in a similar way as well I love the colors of those but what I was saying was I would love to use that kind of wax style but in a just a more accessible like easier way to do it but I kind of still haven't figured that out yet but anyway I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one bye